Hey everyone, Pastor Nathan here. We're glad to have you with us today as we continue praying through the Psalms. We're out of Psalm 119. Uh, we've been there for the last couple of months um, as we've been learning from that psalmist how to pray um, when it comes to the authority of God's Word and when it comes to how precious God's Word is. Now, this time we are taking a small turn away from that in Psalm 121 towards what are known as the Songs of Ascents. That is, these are songs that would be, have been sung or prayed by pilgrims as they were heading up into Jerusalem. Jerusalem sits kind of on a, a hill by itself, and then you always are going up to it because there's valleys around Jerusalem. So you're always walking up to Jerusalem. Just one, one thing to note, um, before we get to Psalm 121, the, the things that we've been learning as we've been praying through the Psalms together, uh, these things, we can apply them in other places of Scripture too, not just the Psalms. The Psalms are the prayer book of the Bible, so they seem like a, a fairly easy entry point into prayer. But um, take, for example, a, a letter of the Apostle Paul, this same technique of using these the, the, the words of our God to guide our prayer and to um, help us enter into that conversation, apply there too, and can be, you know, incredible. So, so I hope that, you know, you can use what we're learning here and apply it to the rest of Scripture as well as we enter into that conversation with our God. Uh, Psalm 121 opens with a couple of verses that are perhaps some of the most famous in the entirety of the Psalms. Um, the psalmist writes, you know, my eyes look to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. Uh, this, these words are in several uh, different, you know, newer contemporary songs. Um, they are, um, they've been a part of the church's songbook for a very long time and, and continue to be reimagined even today. Uh, that being said though, the question that the psalmist starts with is a pertinent question for us too. Um, we can begin, you know, use this question as sort of a a handhold into this to say, well, where does our help come from? Because the, the psalmist is looking at the hills. So Jerusalem sits on a hill and there's a valley around Jerusalem and then there are more hills on the other side of that valley. And so the psalmist, as he's going up to Jerusalem, might be you know, looking at those hills going, man, I just got to get away from whatever situation I'm in. You know, those, those, those hills around Jerusalem might represent kind of salvation for him. They might also represent fear and concern because those hills are also the places where bandits tend to hang out, tend to be, uh, where, where predators tend to live. So the psalmist is looking at those hills either afraid or longing to be there. And regardless though, even if those two different sides of the hills are what are represented for the pilgrim as they are going up to Jerusalem, ultimately they declare this incredible statement of faith, my help doesn't come from being away from the hills or being in the hills. It comes from the Lord, the maker of those hills and everything else, the maker of heaven and earth. So, so for perhaps as we're entering into prayer, it's like we need to be asking the question and examining ourselves. Like, what are we running to? What is our refuge? What are we afraid of? What are we running from? Uh, where, what are we so... Um, struggling with that we are uh, kind of fixed on our eyes on those things. And the psalmist says, no, my eyes are on God because he is the one who makes everything. By the way, verses three through eight, the last five verses of Psalm 121 show the different places where God is at work in the life of the pilgrim at that time, or for us, the followers of Jesus Christ. He's saying, look, this same God, who is your help, he will not let your foot be moved. That is, he's going to keep you on the straight spiritual path. He is your shade in the day and your shelter at night. He also is the God who will keep you from evil, who will keep your life and keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The same God um, who is our help is the same God who will prepare us for whatever evil comes. And I think that, that we need to clarify that. He says he will not like make us have a cushy life. 
This is not like he's going to keep all evil from us so we just kind of like waltz through life like it's, you know, rainbows and butterflies. It's that we're prepared to face the brokenness that this life brings. Um, whether it's the valley of the shadow, like in Psalm 23, that he walks with us. We're not prepared because we're so good, but because he is with us and has the authority and the power to bring us through the valley of the shadow to the other side. Or um, if we're walking through with someone else, that he is also with us there too. This is who our God is. And so what an incredible prayer to pray. Lord, prepare me for what's coming. Lord, let my eyes be fixed on you. No matter what I'm afraid of, no matter what I might want to run to that's not you, remind me that you are the one where my help comes from. In any and every circumstance, shade me, shelter me, guide me, and keep me. Anyhow, I hope that's helpful for you today as you're following your Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Take care, and we'll talk again soon.